Good afternoon. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to the privilege of attending uh, this afternoon at this prestigious event. Uh, as Justin said, I've, I've been working with uh, the Future TV uh, facility for some period of time, and my mic just cut out, did it? No? We're still good? Sorry. So, um, what I'd like to talk to you about this afternoon is uh, what it is that we see in the television industry as a Moby and why we are all in on the future of television. What it is that we see um, as we work with the progressive broadcasters and the progressive uh, buyers of advertising, te television advertising across key global markets that have given us the confidence and the belief that the future of TV will be TV and there is every reason for us to, to be bullish around the prospects for TV. But that does come with some concerns. And I'm not necessarily a big fan of The Matrix as a film. However, I thought it was an appropriate quote to use to set the scene for what I'm about to talk to you about over the course of the next 10 to 15 minutes. Frankly, the television industry is at a binary point. And that binary point is represented by two paths which we can take. We can be complacent. We can be like a frog that you put in a pot and then slowly turn up the heat and find that towards the end of the temperature rise, you're boiled. Or you can be brave and you can be bold and you can be empowered and you can facilitate a new TV economy within which the rules, the responsibilities, the jurisdiction is owned by those people who have a vested interest in the future of TV. So let's explore these two scenarios and let's see which one we'd like to see play out. So the first one, as you were, let's just take it easy, let's assume that everything's going to be okay and let's be complacent around marginal rates of growth and the continued protectionist behaviours of what we see from many broadcast economies across the globe. The simple matter of fact is that the television economy is now working within a tumultuous amount of global turmoil. Socioeconomic, political, environmental concerns are now so great that the marketing and economic confidence that most large advertisers place uh, in their P&L is increasingly eroded. What this has meant is that the chief marketing officer or the chief media officer of most organizations is a insecure, vulnerable position. And as such, in the European region, the average tenure of a marketing manager within a large advertising uh, organization is no more than 18 months. 18 months tenure, which means that more often than not, these individuals with these responsibilities pursue short-term objectives. And those short-term objectives have become destructive to many of these businesses. These short-term objectives mean that increasingly these businesses are investing in media opportunities and media placements that only quickly return against a very short window of opportunity. It means that the long-termist nature of marketing and advertising has become diminished. It means that the media objectives become commoditized and the circle repeats itself over and over and over again. Now, some businesses have been, in, been particularly adept at manoeuvring themselves to address quite this scenario. In fact, some would say they have inflamed deliberately these sorts of scenarios to drive their own business ends. And frankly, it is incredibly impressive. Imagine a scenario where you get to set your own homework, do your own homework, and mark your own homework. I'd be dangerous with this. These businesses are dangerous with this, and yet they remain unchallenged. In most of the global advertising markets, these businesses behave in a way that sits above the established norms, the established responsibilities, the established protocols for how media marketing and advertising would typically take place. And they have reaped the benefits of disrupting these markets. This ain't bad. 10% growth in an advertising market in a region across a five-year period is pretty strong growth. It is consistent with what we see with many of the developed advertising markets. However, within that, there is clearly 
a distinctive differentiation between the established channels and the revenues that they're able to generate and the amount of investment that is going into the new channels, into the new operations. And that is challenging. That is problematic. That's the ratio. For every euro that's coming out of your television economy, 11 euros are going into the digital entrance, the digital disruptors into this advertising market. A minus 1 to 11 ratio. I've seen worse. I was in Australia earlier this year. The ratio was minus 1 to 70. Right? And this is critically important. Right? In a blue pill scenario, right, that is not necessarily considered to be cataclysmic. Yes, we have to create space. We have to create revenue lines for new entrants as marketeers get the dexterity to explore new channels to invest in. But this scenario is playing out largely unchallenged. This scenario is playing out in an economy where these businesses, and more often than not, in most of the advertising markets, there is only one or two beneficiaries from this advertising investment strategy. Right? We all know who they are. We all know how they operate. And we all know that they will continue to operate in, in, in a fashion that will only continue to disrupt your markets. Because purchasing power matters. Right? It matters twofold. It matters because the very vehicles, the content that drive advertising effectiveness, advertising effectiveness on TV is going to be removed from your television stations. Right? The capacity of the broadcasters to compete with global digital businesses that amortize cost, cost across multiple markets that run negative balance sheets with the patronage of their investors that operate with creative application to local tax law, businesses that refuse to subject themselves to the scrutiny of the regulators and the government bodies that are responsible for best practice and the maintenance of an established, well-respected and responsible media economy. These are the businesses that are coming after the television properties. And so I ask the advertisers and the agencies in the room, is this an economy, is this a media environment that you want to continue to support? Right? And I would encourage those of you who do not already read them to subscribe to the Ad Contrarian, who, uh, a fellow called Bob Hoffman who tweets as the Ad Contrarian, and he writes uh, as early as last week, a vociferous, a well-worded takedown of the new media economy if we are continuing to let ourselves subscribe to blue pill thinking. And there is a very real, very present, very tangible end game to this. And this is a quote from a, uh, a CEO of a major print brand who got up on stage in London only a matter of months ago and essentially ran up the white flag, who surrendered. Right? And we must ask ourselves, those of you who have a vested interest in the wealth the well-being and the health of the television industry if this is the end game that we are prepared to tolerate by doing nothing. We're not here for that. I'm not here for that. We're here to own the change. And as I said, we've, we've been fortunate enough to work with progressive broadcasters and progressive buyers of, of television media across the major global markets. And we believe that there is a very compelling story for action, a compelling story to meet these challenges head on and to own the change and for television to, to re-establish itself as the preeminent marketing channel. And it starts by reframing, reframing the dialogue to the things that matters, right? to establish standards that prohibit the self-setting, self-fulfillment and self-marking of the homework, right? that appeal through judicious means and through empirical evidence to the advertisers who are making advertising and investment decisions in media. It's about focusing on the things that are important to brands and that are important to driving brand outcomes and advertising effectiveness, some of which Jamie just touched on. Because the fact of the matter is, as we head into the end of 2019, there is no media channel in the globe that is anywhere near as effective 
at TV at driving the outcomes which matter to advertisers, which matter to brands. In the face of the challenges that TV has had to address from these digital entrants, from these disrupted, disruptive agents that are coming in to try and steal some of our lunch, it remains without parallel. These metrics cannot be achieved using any other channel. We need to reframe. We need to elevate. And the irony, of course, being that the television industry has been the beneficiary of quite that insight from the businesses, the very businesses that are looking to disrupt and take share away from television. Right, and, and this is a US example, but we see consistent uh, metrics uh, for the major European markets and for the APAC, APAC markets as well. So in owning the change, there are three key guiding principles which we use to frame our engagement with our key clients as we work with them to embellish and fortify their television propositions. The first of which is sovereignty. And I think sovereignty is critical. Right? I think it's critical because I think the future of TV needs to be owned and authored and established by the people who are TV operators. This isn't about outsourcing your progressive products or the future of your business to third-party players who simply want to disintermediate and take share from you. This is about ownership. This is about sovereignty. This is about building a TV walled garden. Secondly, and I think Jamie touched on this very well, and we, we hold Sky up to be uh, one of the, the leading examples of how you facilitate the use of technology to drive better accessibility. Because like, accessibility is everything. When you are, as a TV economy, forced to address and react and respond to the incredibly simple, incredibly well-structured advertising products that our digital friends take directly to our clients, we need to understand how we can evolve and adapt and create products of our own that enable accessibility, that remove some of the barriers to entry, that navigate the obstacles that make it difficult to buy television and activate television. Right? And it is within our capacity to deliver these. And like I said, Jamie, has done a, uh, Jamie and Sky have done a tremendous job delivering this out for their customer base in the UK. And was it, Jamie, 1,700 new clients over the course of the last 18 months or so. That is testament to the appetite that can be served by creating more accessibility. And then finally, but by no means least, how do you structure new advertising products? How do you deliver progression and innovation powered by one of the most powerful and one of the most rigorously assessed data sets available to advertisers, but do it in a way that ensures integrity with every part or participant in that ecosystem. Because there is and there remains this unwritten contract between the viewer and the broadcaster or the program maker. And in that contract, we need to be mindful that we shouldn't be intrusive, that we shouldn't be perceived to be dipping their pockets for data points or for information that can help fuel our businesses. There must be an even-sided relationship that is balanced that is based on the integrity of the data set, but nonetheless can be manifest in a way that has utility for the advertiser, for the broadcaster, and of course, critically, for the viewer of television. So we think it's time for change. We think that television can no longer stand by and let its lunch be eaten by the digital disruptive agents that are looking to impose themselves and create a new, sets of rule, new set of rules for television. We think it's incumbent upon us, those of you who have a vested interest in the health and well-being of television, to respond to those opportunities. And let's be masters of our own destiny. Thank you very much.